prescribing sodium valproate to pregnant women is a scandal that's been impacting families for almost five decades. A recent report uncovered that six babies are being born every month after being exposed to sodium valproate, which has been known for many years to cause disorders and development issues. It's led to babies being born with spina bifida, autism and malformations of the brain, heart and kidneys, and in the most severe cases are linked with fatalities. So what are the reasons behind why women are still being prescribed sodium valproate when we know the risks? Why has the government not banned its use in women of childbearing age? The epilepsy drug was first issued in 1973 and was known to be harmful to fetuses back then. It can now also be prescribed for bipolar disorders and migraines. So why are the doctors not fully informing their patients about what is now being referred to as the new thalidomide? It's estimated that up to 20,000 children in the UK have been harmed by sodium valproate. That's more than the number that were affected by thalidomide back in the late 50s and early 60s. A recent investigation found it still being prescribed to pregnant women with warnings covered up. There are many similarities between what happened with thalidomide and what continues to unfold with valproate. In both cases, thousands of babies were born severely deformed after women failed to be properly warned about the risks. The main difference in the case of thalidomide is that the government eventually provided ongoing financial support for those affected. This has yet to happen with valproate and so far the government have refused calls for compensation. The fight continues for these affected people and their families. The manufacturer, Sanofi, raised concerns in the 70s that the drug could be harmful to fetuses, but the medical committee decided the risk was low and it could still be used. The latest figures show that Valproate was prescribed to 247 pregnant women between April 2018 and September 2021. Sanofi states it's not involved in dispensing medicinal products. The company says their packs include warnings to pregnant women and it supports the move to ensure that all patients have access to the appropriate information. In 2012, a campaign trust was launched called Infact a national valproate campaign and was co-founded by Janet Williams who took the drug when she was pregnant and was not warned of the dangers. Her sons are now in their 30s, both need 24-hour care as a result of fetal contact with valproate and Janet believes families deserve compensation. Other people are also coming forward and reporting how they were given valproate and never told of the dangers to pregnant women. Then after giving birth, they are told that their newborn babies have fetal valproate spectrum disorder, also called fetal valproate syndrome. For some patients, valproate works really well to control epilepsy or bipolar disorder, so stopping the drug in these patients can bring its own set of risks. However, healthcare providers need to consider drugs which have a better safety profile. Ultimately, the ongoing problem is that in some cases, people are still not being properly informed. So all patients taking sodium valproate who could become pregnant should now have what's called the Valproate Pregnancy Prevention Program. This includes the patient having their medication annually reviewed, understanding the risks and making sure that they are on highly effective contraception which is explained to them by the healthcare provider. However, there are still some cases where this still is not happening. Another area where there are ongoing issues is in cases where original packs of sodium valproate are split and then dispensed in, in plain packaging by the chemist. Currently, if a doctor prescribes the standard multiples of 28 tablets for valproate, while standard pack sizes are 30, 100 and 112, Legislation states that pharmacists have to split the pack and use a plain white box. This means the medicine may be supplied in the absence of patient information leaflets and warnings about pregnancy that come with the original packaging. It wasn't until 2005 that in the UK that the actual patient information leaflets included concerns about delayed development in children. And in 2016, warnings were also added to the outside of Valproate pill packets. The government ordered an independent safety review in 2018 
after a number of safety scandals over the medical care of women. It was chaired by Baroness Julia Cumberland and the review was conducted by the MHRA, the medicine's watchdog. A spokesperson said Valprate must no longer be prescribed to women or girls of childbearing potential unless they are on the Valprate Pregnancy Prevention Programme. But the Sunday Times has reported that it's still being prescribed to pregnant women in plain packaging without information leaflets or with warnings. There is now data suggesting that people affected by Valproate exposure as an unborn baby could potentially pass on effects to their children. So there are now concerns about whether the effect of the drug could be transgenerational. Reviews carried out by the MHRA have revealed some evidence that effects on behavior such as autism and developmental delay linked with Valproate could be passed on through more than one generation. There are also concerns about whether male fertility could be adversely impacted too. The MHRA has highlighted that there are emerging risks to male sperm from Valproate, as well as fertility issues that can be reversed once the drug is stopped, they state. These risks, it said, could affect 100,000 males taking sodium valproate. In 2021, an MHRA safety review found that carbamazepine, phenobarbital, phenytoin and topramate were all associated with an increased risk of major congenital malformations. Some progress has been made to reduce the use of valproate in people who can become pregnant. There is still a lot of work to do in raising awareness about the potential harm sodium valproate can cause to the unborn fetus and generations to come. We need to also look at the research that's currently available for credible alternative options. Following a safety review carried out by the Commission on Human Medicines, it advised that no patient aged under 55 years should be initiated on the drug unless two specialists have independently considered and documented that there is no other effective or tolerated treatment. Once more data is collected about the impact of the drug on male fertility, as well as the potential transgenerational effects, we will be able to get a true idea of how serious these issues are.